Yeah, welcome back everyone. Let's continue with our discussion of uh, uh, understanding applying prophecies. So we are here uh, in the last part talking about the confirmation uh, of a prophetic word. So as uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 1 says, uh, this will be the third time I am coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. So from the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. So the bottom line is uh, the prophetic word must be confirmed for us to believe it and act on it. So we can't just... Uh, receive everything that is told to us so so many prophetic words come to us it's okay to take time to check for a confirmation and then hold on to the words we we saw that scripture isn't it from thessalonians where it says that uh, 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 do not despise prophecies but you hold on to what is good so we need to test it out test all things hold on to what is good so test it have a confirmation then go ahead and believe it act on it so confirmation is very very important so, uh, when it comes to personal prophecy we've already said uh, how do you how do you feel by the holy spirit within yourself so the inner witness if you feel peace then it is likely from the lord uh, and you can work on it is it is a prophetic word very sudden remember we talked about the general purpose of god for our lives and how a prophetic word might say something totally different so then it's taking us it, it's very sudden you know the way uh, uh, god is speaking he, he's being very inconsistent if that's the true prophetic word so that way we can evaluate and say okay i don't feel that this is uh, a, a in line with the consistency of what god is doing in my life so maybe this prophetic word is really not for me so check that out then the mouth of other witnesses uh usually the way god speaks is he will reiterate he will uh, uh, you know bring it to your notice again like the dream of uh, pharaoh do you remember in the in the bible where there was imagery symbolism in his dream about uh, 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 seven years seven basically he had animals so good cows and uh, you know uh, weak cows and all in his dream but there was a repetition of the same dream uh, and so it got his attention and then he went and he uh, had somebody interpret it, uh, Joseph in this case. So like that, what does God do? God will bring it to our notice a few times. So he helps us get a confirmation regarding the prophetic word. You don't have to act on a standalone word that has been spoken to you. So that is something uh, that we can be careful about. So coming to a congregational prophecy. How does that work? A word has been spoken to the congregation. You remember 1 Corinthians 14, it's a congregational setting where, you know, Paul has many instructions that, okay, if you prophesy, you will edify the church and, uh, uh, you know, let every prophecy be tested, he says. Let it be tested. Everyone prophesy one by one and let the word be uh, tested. So how does, uh, how does the testing of the prophetic word happen in the congregation? Uh, all of us can check whether we have an inner witness or not. A prophet. A prophet can say something that God is going to do this. He is going to, uh, you know, uh, raise us up as an apostolic church and teams will go out from our church. So when we are hearing all these words as a congregation and particularly the leadership of the church, you know, we will sense in our spirit that correct. This is what God has been speaking all along. And so what this person is saying makes complete sense. But if you know it doesn't resonate with the leadership and the congregation maybe the word is very off they're saying something totally different like uh, god is saying that you must shut down your church and uh, he is going to replant all of you in uh, some other location uh, in the city far away from here and you just don't have the witness as a body 
for what is being spoken, then yes, you, know, you have every right to question uh, such a word that is coming through. So that's how uh, you know the pro uh, prophecy can be tested in a congregational setting. So ideally, we say when it comes to uh, the order in ministry, the way we we work. When somebody is a pastor of a church, we honor that position. So if I have a message for the congregation, right? If I have the message, so it's like I want to first submit it to the pastor. Ideally, that would be good that I submit it to the pastor and I say, Pastor, this is what I sense God is saying for your congregation. What do you think? Instead of creating confusion in the church where you know, I just go and I just speak random things and the congregation gets confused. The pastor gets uh, upset. Uh, so instead of doing that in a congregational setting, it's always best to honor the leadership of the congregation, the pastor and submit it to the pastor. I sense this. If there is a word which you feel I should not put it out there to the congregation right now. General things I can say, but something very specific, very uh, sensitive, uh, you could hold that back and then share it personally with the pastor. I feel this is what God is saying. And then the pastor will know how to pray through, uh, find confirmation, communicate it to the congregation. So these are all ways in which uh, the prophetic word should be delivered. We must test it out, wait for a confirmation before it is applied. So some more sections here. Yeah, the last section uh, in this uh, lesson is that mistakes can happen through true prophets as well. Just the way I think I gave us the example, a teacher of God's word. Sometimes uh, they are not fully enlightened on a particular subject. Or, uh, and as they journey with the Lord, as they gain more revelation, uh, they correct their position as far as teaching is concerned. Similarly, when it comes to prophecy, uh, prophets, People who prophesy, believers, we are just human, a human vessel. So while the gift is pure, it can be tainted by the interpretation, the communication, uh, you know, which is not accurate. So when these things happen, one must also understand that the person who is prophesying is growing. Hopefully, you know, they are intentionally developing that gift. And so if they end up making mistakes, uh, labeling people as false prophet, false prophet, uh, that, you know, that uh, that wouldn't be right. We must give space to people to develop and nurture the gift. Will mistakes happen when we prophesy sometimes? Uh, yes. They could happen and which is why we are saying in the presentation of the prophetic word you could use terms like i sense i feel uh, and uh, you can also look for validation where you say uh, uh, i'm hearing this does it does it relate to you uh, does it make sense to you or what is the lord saying to you so learn to submit in a humble way knowing that Maybe you know there is there, there could be some error in what I'm saying. So let me give space for correction for judgment of the prophetic word. Uh, and, and in that way, you see, when, when people are growing in that way, accuracy will come slowly, you know, they become more and more accurate. So the point I'm making is there can be mistakes made in prophecies. Yes, there are so many people who come and say, uh, you know, they said this, it never happened. They said this to me, it never happened. They said this to our church, it never happened. There are many ways of looking at it. Maybe the timing hasn't come, the due time has not come yet. Or maybe, you see, personal prophecies are conditional. Maybe some condition was not fulfilled. Uh, and so there are so many reasons why a, a particular prophecy failed. One of which is, from the source, the person who prophesied did not provide the accurate uh, uh, interpretation or you know 
whatever uh, as a, the the presentation was not accurate so how do we know if uh, somebody is a false prophet now this whole term false prophet they are a false prophet when we look at the bible a false prophet uh, the bible reveals to us in matthew 7 god said uh, uh, i mean jesus said uh, from verses 15 to 20 beware of false prophet who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves you will know them by their fruits do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles even so every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire therefore by their fruits you will know them so false prophets he's talking about false prophets and what is the test he gives us uh, to identify a false prophet just look for fruit from their life so prophesying wrongly once or twice doesn't make a person a false prophet but when we look at their life and the fruit of their life so what do we mean by that you know uh we could talk about galatians 5 where it says love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, you know, long suffering, gentle. So, Christ like character is not something that uh, is part of a person's life, or they're not even moving towards it, not even making any efforts towards it. Then it's questionable. The ministry is questionable when the person is questionable. So, that's how we try to uh, discern whether somebody is a false prophet so their life is not bearing fruit in accordance to uh, you know being born again and being um, uh, aligned to the work of god's word and spirit so such people yes we could term them as false prophets so you know it's a very big accusation like when we say oh he's a false prophet what does the description the Bible says about a false prophet? The fruit of their life is contrary to Christ-likeness. And as you study more passages, uh, Apostle John talks about false prophets. Uh, he, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, he says, Believe not every spirit. So the source, isn't it? Remember we said that God could be speaking man's imagination could be communicated or it can be a demon spirit so here apostle john is is uh, referring to a false prophet who is empowered by a demon spirit so the words are coming from the demonic don't believe them so that discernment in our spirit is also required. Which spirit is the, is this person prophesying by? You recall uh, the lady in Philippi, that uh, the slave girl, uh, and she was fo doing fortune telling. And she was also giving free publicity to Paul uh, and, and his team and saying, oh, listen to them. They are uh, men of God. They speak to you uh, from the Lord. Why is it that Paul got upset? She's saying the correct thing. She is, in fact, promoting them and saying, come and listen. Discernment. Discernment within him said, it's a demon. What she may be saying could be accurate to some extent, but the source is wrong. That's why he got upset and he rebuked. He cast out the demon, the spirit of divination from that woman uh, uh, in Philippi. So that's how we function. So. Our spirits can discern seemingly what they are speaking is correct, but it's coming from the wrong source. And the Holy Spirit can give us that witness in our spirit. So that's how you identify the wrong spirit, uh, false prophets. And even uh, Apostle Peter, he talks about false uh, uh, prophets and he says uh, so many things about them. 
in second uh, peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 he says uh, but there were also false prophets among the people even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies denying the lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed by covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber so what is he referring to he's talking about uh, uh you know those who fall into error uh because of wrong motivation so here he pointed out covetousness they are seemingly doing the work of the ministry but what is the intention i should get rich i should get famous i should get you know so you the motivation is wrong the intention is wrong the spirit is wrong uh, they may be prophesying from their own imagination so these are all the questions one needs to ask before they call somebody a false prophet just making genuine mistakes along the uh, way of nurturing the prophetic gift doesn't make one a false prophet and in fact you know uh, god's god very strongly calls to honor uh, his prophets so <coughs> there are things like uh, first chronicle 16 22 where he says do not touch my anointed ones and do not do my prophets no harm so that's how god uh, actually defends his prophets uh, again we see in uh, numbers 12 verses 1 through 9 uh, that uh, we are encouraged not to take lightly when some someone god doesn't take it lightly when someone speaks against his prophets so uh, yeah allegation of uh, somebody being a false prophet we've got to be really careful when we say that it has to do more with uh, the spirit the motivation the intention and also the outcome of their life and ministry the fruit watch the fruit and then we could tell whether or not one is a false prophet so not based on one or two wrong prophecies okay so there's a lot we have spoken about anything that you want to elaborate on before i jump to the next uh, section here about interpreting dreams I hope you're all fine. Uh, too much content, too much input. Yeah, it's okay. Man. Okay, that's nice. That's good. Thank you, Brother Isaac. Any any other thoughts? Okay, so uh, I'm hoping all uh, of these, uh, you know, practical instructions will help us as we flow in the gift of prophecy. Thank you, Divya. I see your message there. Divya is saying we are doing fine. So let's move ahead. Let's move to interpreting dreams. Um, dreams, while within the whole um, uh, range of prophetic communication from god dreams are very interesting you know uh, it, it forms that section that is amazing to just understand hey what is god trying to say it's exciting uh, to talk about dreams and god speaks through dreams we've uh, seen passages from uh, Job 33, where uh, I, once again I will read it for our benefit, uh, verses 14 and through 18. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. In order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man, he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So what does God do? God communicates even when man is sleeping. So what does it tell about our spirit? Our spirit is sensitive at all times, whether we are awake, whether we are sleeping. And God uses that opportunity to seal a message within us through a dream. He speaks to us how? In a dream, in a vision of the night. Okay, he speaks to us. So 
we we are quite clear because now we know about the spirit man we said spirit has senses so when the body is sleeping the spirit is still alive awake and receiving the messages from god uh, so does every dream come from god no the bible talks about it ecclesiastes 5 verse 3 it says for a dream comes through much activity now there are times in our lives where we are preoccupied by uh, tasks responsibilities uh, or uh, you know some uh, important uh, upcoming event so when we are preoccupied what does the bible say a dream comes through much activity so i might have dreams about those things and that does not necessarily uh, mean that god is god is you know communicating uh, uh, specifically you know about something but it's just it's just my mind you see so then the whole psychology thing comes into play and uh, all that so not every dream is from the lord some are just normal everyday activities causing uh, us to have a dream so that also happens uh, so then i don't have to worry too much about interpreting every dream that i have but the ones which are from god yes i can try to interpret because that has a message now the other source of dream can also be demons uh because we know that they do plant thoughts in our minds uh that's the workings of of the methods of working of uh, satan we have studied about it in first year he plays through our minds so can he affect our dreams can he give people dreams yes so demon spirits can also have entrance they can intercept our night sleep with dreams so uh, i know that we've had uh, uh, occasions when we've had nightmares or things that are scary uh, because when satan puts a dream how do we differentiate what is from god what is not from god when god speaks to us it will have god's nature in it so god's nature is goodness faithfulness hope love joy peace it could be a scary dream that we are seeing but overall the sense that i have through that dream is god will bring me out there is hope there is light at the end of the tunnel but if there is a dream which leaves us with the sense of oh there's no hope there's fear there's intimidation everything is going to fall apart obviously we know hey this cannot be from the lord uh, because satan is trying to scare us what does he do his uh, uh, intention is to uh, leave us in that place of fear we have not received a spirit of fear isn't it so that's how we try to understand what is from the lord what is not from the lord so there are many sources that's the point i'm making god demons just our daily activities so uh, we are talking specifically about the dreams from god that bring us instruction they could bring us some correction they could be trying to reveal some things uh, about ourselves or about the future they're trying to protect us preserve us so these are all things that god does can an unsaved person have dreams what do you all think can god speak to an unsaved person yes 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 so uh, true because uh, pharaoh who had a dream remember uh, he is an egyptian but uh, he had a dream uh, so this is how god works he can minister through dreams and you know lately we've heard so many testimonies of uh, people particularly you know in the middle east who encounter god in their dreams and uh, they've come to accept the lord i i have i have a friend as well who had a dream and uh, she actually accepted christ because of a dream that she had so yes god can speak to people uh, through dreams and so we can pray and say god give people dreams lord speak to them meet them in their dreams open their eyes unveil their eyes to know that you are the living savior uh, through a dream so god can speak even to unsaved people 
Now let's uh, try and talk about you know uh, dreams in the Bible. So there are so many dreams that have been listed out. Dreams and visions. Okay, visions also is kind of uh, we visions. We we are talking about visions also because uh, interpretation kind of works the same way. It's it's prophetic imagery, and then you know one needs to uh, draw the meaning. That God intends of that dream or vision. So there are records of dreams that people had. Abimelech, you know, that king uh, uh, that uh, met with Abra Abraham at that time, had a dream. Jacob's dream, you know, Jacob's uh, dream of the ladder. Uh, then you have Laban who had a dream. Joseph, uh, you know, had dream. Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh's butler and uh, baker, they had dreams. So uh, like that, you can just go on listing things out. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. The Magi, when they came to meet Jesus, you know, how did they come? They came because of the, uh, and how did they escape? They also had a dream, right? So uh, this is how people have received communication from the Lord. People have also had visions in the Bible. Uh, so we know Balaam. We started with Balaam and the vision that he received from the Lord. Uh, Abram, when God was putting his promises, imparting his promises into Abram's spirit, God gave him a vision uh, in Genesis chapter 15. So we know that's how he spoke to him. Then Ezekiel, so many visions uh, he had. Uh, then, uh, uh, you know, you had uh, Peter, Paul. So you can list out so many visions. Now, what is common in dreams and visions is, I told us, prophetic imagery, symbolism. There are uh, symbols, there are parables, there are riddles. Uh, and uh, also we said comparisons that one could see in the dream. So it becomes very, very crucial. When we are releasing a prophetic word, we talked about interpretation. Now think about this. In a dream and a vision, the interpretation has to be very accurate. We have to do the interpretation by the Spirit of God uh, because there's a lot of imagery. There's a lot of symbolism that is going on. Now, when we look at symbols in our dreams, some may have a self-contained meaning. Okay, That is easy to interpret. Uh, but some symbols have an assigned meaning. So I will come to that. Okay, I will come to uh, what it means. Like um, if we take up, there are examples given in our uh, notes here. When in, uh, let's say, uh, scripture passages, like in Jeremiah 1 verse 18, there is the mention of an iron pillar, an iron pillar. So the moment we think about an iron pillar, what do we think of? strength so the symbol itself contains the meaning it's an iron pillar it has strength so strength is the self-contained meaning of the iron pillar or if you take for example <clears throat> he washes us with the uh, water of the word water it can have a cleansing effect. Thankfully, the, the scripture itself says, washes us with the water. So water, cleansing, we know water cleanses. So it's easy to understand. The meaning is right there, self-contained meaning. But sometimes there are assigned meanings. Now, uh, uh, Jeremiah 24, it talks about figs. I can't buy, when you say figs, Figs can mean so much. Figs can mean nourishment, a fruit, refreshing, sweet. I can interpret it in a thousand ways. But the assigned meaning, as I look at scripture, figs there would represent Jewish captives. Good figs would represent Jewish captives. So you see there, fig will not have its own meaning. But it will have another meaning from scripture. So if I understand scripture, I can put the correct meaning. Oh, it's talking about Jewish captives. So when I see a fig, I'll be like, oh, okay. That's what God is trying to say. He's talking about the Jewish captives. So this is the manner in which, though there are many symbols, one needs to practice. 
identifying is it a self contained meaning or is it an assigned meaning so when there is clarity then interpretation will become more accurate so we have to receive the the uh, when it comes to assigned meaning then we have to receive it from the lord you understand what i'm saying because self contained okay we can understand what uh, uh, iron pillar <coughs> fire some things are clear cut but assigned is when we are depending on god to uh, figure out and we also depend on uh, you know what the word has to say so how do i uh, interpret you know particularly for this uh, assigned meaning assign th those symbols use biblical symbolism okay uh, so if we know the world that we live in right now there's people are awakened to spirituality and uh, so there are uh, you know mystics there are uh, psychologists there are gurus there are uh, uh, you know occultic practices and organizations so you have so many people who can give us some <laughs> sorry um uh, source of interpretation so they have their own new age way of interpreting symbols but the right way of interpretation is go by biblical symbolism see in the bible what does it say don't ever go to any other source of interpretation then uh sometimes when we talk about finding the meaning of those words uh we may not have those in the bible okay for example we just said we while prophesying we saw a man we saw a car where is a car in the bible you know okay transportation is there in the bible so we can relate it but if god is talking about car car is not in the bible so then i need to depend on the lord to interpret it or you know i might see a spacecraft where is spacecraft in the bible you know so there there is symbolism that may not be in scripture like literally there uh, but by the spirit of god by discerning i can get an understanding of what exactly god is trying to say uh, and uh, when it comes to symbolism another important uh, key that we should recognize is everything is not a symbol some things can be literal okay so for example in my dream if i see my sister or uh, my brother they come and they say hey give back my phone <laughs> it might literally mean they my brother wants his phone back my sister wants her phone back so that's literal it is them but sometimes it's symbolic so when i get a dream in that i see a, my sister and she is asking for something back it might mean that uh you know in a spiritual way there is something to be restored back to my own people so that's symbolic you understand so some things can be literal some things can be symbolic which is why it makes even more interesting to interpret a dream you know how do you get it what is literal what is symbolic and you really need the spirit of god to help uh, in, in differentiating these things and uh, in interpreting a dream we can also think of the audience uh, now a message could be coming through just for you so i wake up i had this dream and it's all about me it's all about my family it's all about my ministry so who is the audience for this me god is speaking to me now i might have a dream i i am a pastor of the church i have a dream and i see something something about the church who is the audience it it is for it is coming to the pastor but it's actually for the church so maybe god is saying you know open the doors and reach out to the communities so the audience is the church something needs to be done for the church okay over there so like that we have to discern the audience who is god speaking to it could be a friend of yours it could be a family member or it could be somebody else so that also helps us uh, get the proper meaning of the dream we must identify the audience 
OK. So identify, uh, it also says one more instruction here, says identify the meaning or resemblance between the symbol and the audience. So that also would be helpful. Uh, if we are unable to identify the meaning of a particular symbol from the Bible or resemblance you know, of uh, the symbol to the audience, then there are a few more things which are listed here. Uh, I would mainly talk about uh, knowledge of scripture. So when we have knowledge of scripture, then it becomes easy uh, you know, for us to find the meaning because then we will be aware uh, where is it, you know, is it there in the Bible or not, first of all? So if it is there in the Bible, uh, then, you know, how how should I assign the meaning? For example, if, uh, let's say, I see a lion in my dream. A lion is a symbol for the lion, like lion of Judah, God, I can understand. But the Bible also says, you know, your adversary, like a roaring lion, there are two meanings now. Which one should I assign to the lion that I saw in the dream or in the vision? So it takes, you know, it takes discernment. It takes understanding of uh, the Bible and uh, images in the Bible uh, for me to think, okay, this is the correct meaning. Now, if I have determined the audience, then also it's somewhat easy uh, that I can put the meaning to the word that I am, uh, the symbol that I am seeing. Okay, so uh, determine the audience uh, and also know the word enough to put the correct meaning. Now, even dove, if you take dove, for example, we know that uh, there is a connection, like we talk about the Holy Spirit as a dove, but the Bible also says, don't be gullible. For God's people, uh, it says, like dove, don't be gullible. Gullible is uh, easily tricked. So the same dove, the same symbol has two meanings. So in interpretation, when I'm assigning the meaning, it really helps to know, you know which one is God talking about. So these are all things that uh, would be uh, helpful for me to Come, come out with the meaning. And we've already said, depend on the Spirit of God. So thank God that we can also go by uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Some Like we can pray for the, inter for the flow of the uh, uh, word of wisdom, right? Or the discerning of spirits. These are all gifts which will help us to uh, interpret dreams. So in this manner, we can actually go ahead and interpret the dreams. Uh, and uh, then in our in our notes here, there is an entire list of uh, symbols, materials, gestures, actions, even numbers, names, colors, uh, and what they mean. So it's it's been listed out. I'll quickly take us through this, and then we'll talk some practical things. So symbols, such as if I see a sword. What is the meaning of a sword? You know, a sword could mean uh, uh, the word of God, uh, but a sword could also mean that relationship with the Lord was broken, right? In Genesis, we know that uh, judgment came. And so a sword uh, is, is also from there. So a breach of relationship uh, between God and man, that also could be the meaning of the sword. But when I determine the audience, OK, if I'm seeing a sword and this is talking about me and it's talking about my spiritual life, then it's easy for me to interpret. OK, then I make the connection. That sword must be referring to the word of God. And I use it with that meaning. Then I assign the meaning that, OK, it is the word of God. It's not a self-contained meaning, but I'm assigning the meaning. It means word of God. So like that, there are many symbols. I might see a burning bush. Burning bush is easy. <laughs> burning bush, Moses, presence of God. Okay, that's what God is saying. I'm seeing a burning bush in my dream and I'm standing next to the burning bush. God is saying that you need my presence or I'm giving you my presence, something like that. Uh, so again, so many symbols. Water, Holy Spirit, fire. Fire could also mean Holy Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> we could see uh, 
uh, a mantle you know the mantle elijah's mantle was on elisha what is it anointing that god is talking about anointing oil oil is also holy spirit anointing so there are symbols uh, in in the bible we could uh, look at materials things in the bible so when uh, you see a boiling pot boiling pot in jeremiah's prophecies where judgment which came on the people or uh, you know you see uh, uh, dry bones dry bones becoming uh, as flesh that is the restoration of israel uh, you had uh, lampstands lampstands golden lampstands referring to churches in the book of revelation uh, or blood blood is connected to life isn't it life uh, or forgiveness so uh, like that we look at the symbol and we go by what we know in the bible so keys keys is authority we've already said incense incense is prayer incense is you know worship to the lord uh, door entry point don't give the devil uh, uh, you know any any uh, foothold in your life door foothold uh, bread bread is what provision god gives us so like that you look at symbols and then you go by what the bible has to say about those symbols that will help us interpret or gestures when uh, let's say one is tearing their clothes it's grief they're expressing grief anger so those expressions right like or somebody is laying hands on someone maybe god is saying uh, you know there is a blessing coming or uh, there is a transference of the anointing so gestures we could see some gestures in our dreams uh, handshake somebody is shaking hands with us maybe it means friendship god is developing a friendship uh, so we we understand it there can be uh, what else actions yeah we we've, we've already talked about it numbers sometimes there can be numbers you see the number seven that is a number uh, that denotes perfection or number eight number of new beginnings or number 40 it's uh, generally associated with you know because you know moses 40 years uh, he at 40 years he came out to do the ministry and then 40 years in the wilderness so a time of testing a time of preparation uh, that is also what you can interpret so we might see bible characters in our dreams you know moses is coming and talking to me so what is that okay a leader is speaking uh, or uh, somebody who has the word of god is speaking to me so that way you should think of the biblical meaning and assign it then coming to colors we see colors white uh, though your sins be red as scarlet i will you know wash them white as no white is what purity holiness or purple P purple is what royal robes royalty it speaks of royalty red can speak of sin uh, or uh, can speak of the blood of jesus so these are all things that uh, are helpful in interpreting dreams so let me just stop here we have roughly about seven minutes in case you want to uh, you know talk about any dreams actually just two weeks ago one of uh, uh, somebody had come to me for a particular dream uh, interpretation uh, <clears throat> and you know it was something like they saw themselves uh, driving a car and uh, they they were exiting their home from another passageway it was not your usual you know gate but uh, there was another way so they are driving a car and that passageway that road is very narrow from where they are going out uh, uh, but their whole family is in the car and uh, you know then they they saw that their family is doing well they are happy something like that so then uh, we prayed about it and the interpretation that i gave them is see uh, this person driving is like they are leading the way and they are leading the way they are leading a different way because they are not going out the usual way right so it's a different path uh, and this person is leading and they are going to lead their family to a better um, a future and it's not going to be easy because it was a narrow path 
Okay. So also the interesting thing is that this person is the only believer in their home. So what was God trying to tell them? God was trying to tell them that I'm using you to pave a way for salvation for your entire family. And it's a difficult road that you're going through, but you are moving forward and you're 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 taking your whole family don't worry as you're praying for them as you're ministering to them as you're sowing seeds of faith in their lives you're carrying them on that same journey they will come they will come so you lead don't stop leading so that was the message that came out of that dream okay uh, so things like that when one has a dream you go into that interpretation mode and you try to get the meaning so uh, any any questions about dreams Uh, yes, Sivya. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, if uh, we need to consider the, you know, the emotion of the person who was having the dream, like uh, what they were going through, uh, while or what was their sense of the dream um, as they think about it. Uh, so, do we need to consider that? And also, um, does it play a part in, uh, you know, understanding the source? As you said earlier, like dreams can be from either from God or it can be our daily, you know, daily activities or even from uh, the evil ones. So um, do we need to consider the emotion of the person? Uh, yes, Divya. So we generally say that the best interpreter of a dream is the person who got the dream. Ideally, when one gets a dream, they should be able to interpret it. That would be the best because they know all the nuances of what they saw and what they experienced. So emotions, feelings, when the dream was happening, it, it matters. Sure. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, sure. So what do we do when we get a nightmare? I'm calling uh, nightmare. Uh, I mean, this is my own terminology. I don't think they use this in the Christian circles, but from the uh, demons or the devil, if you get a dream, you have a nightmare. What do you do then? Something scary, something destructive. What do you do? We pray about it and reject it. Yes, yes. It's as simple as that. So when whenever we have a dream, no need to ponder and worry because that's what Satan wants us to do. Immediately, we can do what Divya said. You pray and you reject it. You can say something like, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. This dream is talking about uh, the attack of the enemy. But I cover my family with the blood of Jesus. I cover my church family with the blood of Jesus. So you go opposite to what the dream is saying. And leave it at that and forget it off. Yeah, don't, don't, let, don't give the devil what he wants. Your fear, your worry, your anxiety. Okay, so all right then, uh, we can uh, stop here and uh, we still have another session. Hopefully that will be our last session on uh, prophetic ministry. Uh, and if you have any, you know, any uh, doubts, uh, any questions, we will take it up. Uh, so right now let's wrap up with a word of prayer. I uh, just want to request uh, one of us to go ahead and pray, please. Shall I pray? Yes, Sivya. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, beautiful time that you gave us, Lord. Thank you for this uh, great opportunity, Papa, that you've given us uh, to learn about uh, these different aspects, Lord, of uh, dreams and visions and the uh, the prophetic uh, word and uh, all the uh, interpretations, Father, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord, help us uh, that we don't take these for granted. Help us, Lord, to nurture these, uh, to ask uh, uh, Lord, and pray for the discernment, uh, Father, to pray for the uh, word of wisdom and knowledge to flow in us uh, uh, through the Holy Spirit, uh, to pray for um, us being a blessing but to uh, other other lives. Uh, Father, uh, also, Lord, as we learned uh, that we need to be uh, careful about the interpretation and presentation and application. Father, we pray that you help us, uh, Father, to grow in these uh, areas, Father, that uh, uh, we may be able to bless uh, ourselves as well as others' lives. Father, uh, we pray, Father, that um, you bless uh, Pastor Nancy, um, uh, Lord, empower her and strengthen her, Father. We pray for each and every student in the class. Uh, we pray, Father, for your grace, your mercy, your uh, protection, Father, in each one of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Divya, and thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless you. Have a blessed week. We'll uh, meet again next week. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.